Welcome to Hurting Little Cows. Um, you caught us again on Saturday. Um, we made the Dutch baby this morning, and now we're going to make some bread. Being that it's Saturday, we want to get the, um, things prepared for Sunday so we don't have to do a lot of work on Sunday, and our family eats a lot of bread. So we are going to make four loaves of French bread in this recipe. Um, we will put the actual recipe in the description at the bottom, um, but I'm going to read off my recipe here. So first you add five cups of water, um, warm to the touch, but not hot, so you don't burn your yeast, or toast your yeast, this one's burning. Like I said, this is going to be four um, loaves of French bread. Um, most of, we started out making this recipe, we would make two loaves at a time, but now we know that we use it in a timely manner. This bread is usually gone within three days, so I don't have to worry about it molding on the counter. Um, if you're a family that eats less bread than we do, um, then you might want to start with two loaves, which would be half this recipe. Next, we're going to put in sugar. We're going to put in eight teaspoons of sugar. So. We buy sugar um, in a 10 pound bag um, from the store. Um, I found it's hard to keep sugar um, without bugs and having to keep animals out of it. We sometimes have mice in our basement. So it's easier to have a small amount of sugar than to get the um, larger amounts. We have bought over 100 pounds before um, and we had a place to store it in dry storage, but where we have right now doesn't work. So we buy just the 10 pound bags. Um, that's what we find most profitable for our use. I haven't found that sugar in a bulk amount has been a lot cheaper for us to buy. Next, we're going to add um, the yeast. This is not the best way to buy yeast. We ran out the other day and we needed bread. So I went to the store and I think I spent $7 on this little container of yeast. We buy it in one pound packages that come from Sam's Club that are two packages for $5, um, which is a lot more yeast than this little container. Um, we had just run out. I had been bad about, um, we had bought a whole bunch in bulk at one point and I didn't realize it was gone until it was gone. So um, this is not the best way to do it. This you need to store in the fridge or else the yeast will die. Um, when I buy the big one pound blocks, we store it in quart jars in the freezer and either use it directly out of the freezer or we'll put some in the fridge in a jar like this um, to use um, where we use it regularly. So I need to add, I just want to make sure I do the right measurements. You need to add six teaspoons of yeast. Again, you don't want your water too hot or you will kill the yeast. Yeast is an actual living organism and if the water's too hot, it won't be able to do what it does best, which is to make your bread rise. So at this point, a lot of people would stop at the bread making process. So <laughs> this is where you would let the yeast and the sugar and the water sit together for a little while to make sure that the yeast proofs, um, which means it starts to get a little bubbly and show you that it actually is alive and can do that work. I just bought this yeast. Um, within the past week, it's been sitting in the fridge. I know it's good. Um, because we use yeast so often, I don't proof it most recipes that I make um, because I know that it's still good yeast. But if you have yeast that may be old, um, you definitely would want to sit and wait for a little bit. Um, it usually only takes three or four minutes to let it get bubbly, just so you know the yeast is actually working. Um, you don't want to add the salt until after you've done that proofing process. Um, as salt can inhibit the growth of the yeast, so it makes it harder to see if your yeast, if your yeast is going to grow. Um, if you add the yeast now, I mean, add the salt now to the yeast, you're going to have a long rising time um, with the dough, and so the yeast doesn't inhibit the long rising time. It's just the slow proofing of it there. So I need eight teaspoons of salt. And we usually just buy the really big um, blue box um, of regular iodized salt. We use um, Himalayan sea salt for our table salt, but for just our cooking salt that we're putting in recipes, we just buy the, I think it's Morton's blue box iodized. Um, and salt's a fairly cheap ingredient. 
So this bread we have figured out to make the four loaves costs us 30 cents a loaf to make in the quantities that we buy stuff. It is more expensive today because we're using this $7 package. But normally it costs 30 cents a loaf to make this bread. And so then we're going to add a total of 12 to 14 cups of flour. I add three cups at a time, mix it three cups at a time until I get towards the upper amount and then we will knead it. So, again, my measurements are not exact. It works in this bread recipe and because we've made bread so often, um, I've probably been making most of the bread for our family on and off for, I don't know, 13 years or so. Um, there was a time when we were living in the camper that we used a bread machine because um, we couldn't cook it in our oven. Um, our oven was too small. But the um, bread machine is not big enough for our family now to make it practical to use. It was great when we had a smaller family um, because we could make one and we'd still have leftovers of meat. But now if we make a loaf of bread, in a bread maker, it is gone by the end of the meal and people are still wanting more. So we have found this to be more cost effective. And I'm not usually the one who makes the bread, usually the girls who want to make the bread. <laughs> so this is a job that both the older girls can just be sent to do. So over the course of the week, nobody is being um, forced to do this one job. It's not, I have to find time in my schedule to make the bread, we can do it. Um, on a regular base, basis because I can just send other people. So I've added a total of six cups, adding another three. It's kind of hard to count while you're making it, but that's okay. We're up to nine cups. We are going to need at least another three and probably more than that. Bread is very finicky on when it's done and bread is, bread is definitely worth continuing to work at. Um, if you can't, if you feel like you can't make good bread, keep trying. Try another recipe. Try the same recipe over and over. Make sure that your yeast was good. Make sure that you um, kneaded it long enough. Make sure you added enough flour. Um, once you know how to make bread, um, you just kind of know what it feels like. And you know when to add more flour. You know when to add more water. Um, but it's hard to explain to um, the novice. I know it took me a good six months to get a loaf of bread that would turn out every time. So today it might take a lot more flour. So if you see me adding a lot of extra flour to the recipe, um, it is raining outside today and it's very moist in the house from cooking that we've already done. So um, more flour might need to be added because of the moistness of the weather outside. So now that I've got nine cups in here, I'm only going to add two more cups right now, which will help me be able to still stir and we'll add the flour for the meat. So again, this is much more cost effective. Getting flour everywhere. This is much more cost effective than bread at the store. And you can add healthy things, which do increase the price of the bread, but also um, make it more nutritionally dense for your family. Um, I haven't done it in this recipe, but I've made plenty of recipes where it has oatmeal, or it has flaxseed, um, whole wheat flour, oat flour, like there are all different recipes out there. Um, this is just a basic white French bread, bread recipe. Um, you will see when we um, shape the bread later that we don't do it in traditional French loaves. For our family, it's easier to just make in a bread pan that makes it sandwich size bread. I'm gonna add one more cup. We're gonna start the kneading process. Getting another cup ready, <laughs> as I think I'll need at least a whole other cup of flour. This is the part where your hands get sticky, which is okay. Enjoy it. Get out some of the frustrations. Get some exercise to those arms. All of us mamas can use some exercise if you carry those babies around all day. Um, and just enjoy. God's made food for us to enjoy. Otherwise, we wouldn't have taste buds. But our family really enjoys this recipe. Um, our family really enjoys this recipe. But <laughs> this recipe, um, we use this bread as sandwich bread. We use this bread 
for eggs every morning. Um, like we would use it for eggs. I also have some other recipes. I will try to make one in another um, video. We have an English muffin bread that we make also. But this is our most used bread. Um, we'll put butter on it. We'll put cream cheese on it. Cream cheese with a little everything but the bagel seasoning. Very good. Um, the kids will eat peanut butter toast as a snack. Um, we have a couple kids who, um, when they're going through growth spurts, or one has a little um, issue, we're treating it as a sugar issue. We're not exactly sure what's going on. We're looking into that. But um, she wakes up in the middle of the night hungry sometimes. So they get either a spoonful of peanut butter or a piece of peanut butter toast before bed most nights to be able to give them the protein they need to get through the night because their little growing um, bodies. And I know as an adult, I like to occasionally snack before bedtime. So why would our kids be able to go through the night if I need to have a snack? So I wore the wrong shirt for the snow sleeves to come down. It's easier if you have a shirt for the sleeves. Stay up, but. So I'm just going to be kneading the bread. This is the consistency. I hope you can see it on the thing. This is the consistency you want. It's going to be a little bit sticky, and as you need, you just keep adding little bits of flour. Um, it will stick slightly to your hands. Some of this is from when I first started kneading. Um, you want it to not be sticking to your hands the whole time. As you feel it's sticky, you sprinkle a little flour over the top. And the process of kneading um, is pretty much you're pulling the bread onto itself and then pushing it down pulling it onto itself and pushing it back into itself. Um, it's a very rhythmic motion once you get going. Um, but again, it's one of those things that's hard to explain. It's easier to see somebody doing it. So I am going to flour everywhere, but that's okay. So while I need this bread, which now is just kind of a mindless process, um, we set the kids up with folding some laundry in the other room while we're doing this video. So hopefully you won't hear them too much. But um, I wrote a list today of the things that we're going to do on a Saturday to try to get ready for having a Sunday rest um, and just make sure that we're ready to enjoy our day tomorrow, be ready to wake up refreshed and ready to worship. So we have a list on the board I'll show, we'll show you a picture of, and I'm going to talk through it. But if you see me turning my head, it's because I'm looking at the list on the board. Um, we'll go right down the list. It is not in order of importance. Well, no, it's in order of importance. It's not in order of what's going to happen. Um, the first thing on that list is nap. Um, as a pregnant mama, I'm tired. And I also have just started last night um, night weaning the baby. So he was up last night wanting milk. Um, he's now 19 months old. Um, actually, today he's 20. He's, today he's 20 months old. Um, and so he does not need the milk anymore in the longer in the middle of the night. He is not getting satisfied with it. And um, I think he needs to sleep more than he needs to be awake wanting milk. So we are um, sleeping in another room, him and I currently, to be able to remind him that we're not having milk in the middle of the night. We were up for an hour and a half in the middle of the night last night, but then he realized, yep, mommy needs business and I'm not getting the milk. So, um, but I am taking a nap today so that I can Enjoy church tomorrow. <laughs> sorry. I'm also very winded in this pregnancy, so sorry if sounding up. Um, the next thing on the list is laundry. Um, we try to get caught up for a few reasons on Saturday. One is it's just nice to get to the bottom of all the different dirty clothes hampers. Um, I'm sure if you have a large family, you know that sometimes there's stuff that sits in there for a little bit till you actually get to it. You never actually get to the bottom of the load. So knowing that at least once a week we are getting every basket totally empty um, is a good thing. Also, we can get everything folded and put back on the shelf so everyone can find their clothes in the morning. Um, and we just know that we don't have to worry about that part of the day. Um, sometimes if we're really busy on a Saturday, like let's say we have an event to go to or whatever, we try really hard to make sure the laundry actually gets cycled through the washers and dryers, and we may have some clean clothes baskets sitting somewhere. Um, we do try to get them folded and put away on Saturdays, um, but just knowing that they're clean and that we'll be able to have access to the clothes we need for church on Sunday is very useful. So the next thing on the list, the library. We've got some books to return, and the kids 
um, are really into reading right now. Um, we're very careful with our selection of library books, and I'll talk about that in a different video, but um, we get a lot of nonfiction books. Um, right now, one of the books we're reading as a family is Whatever Happened to Penny Candy? Um, I don't know much about this author. I know that he's written other books, and it's very well um, recommended by a lot of homeschooling people. We're only, um, I don't know, five or six chapters in, but it just talks about inflation and salaries and wages and how everything has um, bumped up or bumped down the value of money, so it's bumped up prices. Um, and it's a really interesting discussion starter. We've had a lot of good talks about it. And on that, we also just found out that there's um, a video series called Economics for Everyone by R.C. Sproul Jr. that um, is very good in laying out in layman's terms um, how our society, um, how economics really is involved in our worldview, and that if we do not have God as the center of our worldview, um, we won't have economics, right? And how it has led to communism and a whole bunch of other um, issues. So really recommend that. Um, economics for Everybody by R.C. Sproul Jr. There may be a workbook or something that goes with it. I only have a video series. I'm not really sure. It may have a whole curriculum. I don't know. So next thing on the list is bread. We're getting that done. Bread needs to be started early in the morning um, because it takes time to rise. Um, you can make it rise faster by putting it in a warm oven, but um, we're making the bread before we go out to the library today so it can rise on its own here on the counter. In the winter, we usually put it in a warm oven as the house is a little too cool um, to make it rise well. But the bread also, after we put it in the pans, needs to rise again. Then you need to bake it and have it um, cool enough to put away. We sometimes don't get bread made till later in the afternoon and someone is having to put bread away as their last thing before going to bed um, because the bread was too hot earlier in the evening. So, um, ham, we have a ham that I bought on sale last week, two weeks ago, whatever, for Easter. Um, I put it in the freezer, but I took it out and we're gonna cook it today so that we can use some of it for meals tomorrow. Um, we will also use it for a meal today. Um, the bathrooms very badly need to be cleaned. Should have happened earlier in the week, but we've had a lot of rain, and so we've just been enjoying the days that we can actually get outside in the sun, and so it's kind of been pushed to the back of the list. You can still use the bathroom and everything, it just needs a good scrubbing. So, um, it's not that the house is not functional, functional or we're getting sick or anything, it just does need a good scrubbing here. And baths. On Saturday night, we try to make sure that everybody um, gets a bath. Sometimes they happen on Saturday mornings, but it looks like it might be nice later today. We're going to go run around outside, so I want people to get all sweaty and then take their baths. Um, sometimes we'll do them on Saturday mornings, you know, we're just going to be stuck in the house all day. But um, bath time, when you have a family this size, takes time um, to make sure that everybody gets a time in the bathroom, gets a time to um, do what they need to do, but also we have young ones, so I need to be there to supervise the six-year-old, the four-year-old, and the um, 20 month old um, I can't just leave them sitting in a bath and go do something, um, especially the 20 month old because he um, doesn't always like to sit So we are working on it. Um, he just started liking that. So we try to get um, baths done for everybody. Um, also, I sometimes just need to be available. Someone forgot a towel or, um, you know, needs help rinsing their hair or whatever. That might be for um, other people, you know, even if it's one of the older kids just needing me to grab a thing of clothing or whatever. So, it's that I need to be available for. And um, then on the list, we also have I was just trying to think through meals for Sunday. I haven't decided what I'm doing for lunch tomorrow, but before church, we're going to have eggs and toast with this bread that I'm making right now. Um, we usually do some scrambled and then some fried. And then tomorrow night for dinner, we are going to put some potatoes in the crock pot. If you leave them in the crock pot all day, I don't know the exact timing because I haven't only done it once before and I forget. 
But if you leave them in the crock pot all day, you get baked potatoes at the end of the day. So we're going to eat baked potatoes for supper with some ham off that ham that I'm cooking today. Some cheese and some sour cream people to toppings on their potatoes. That's going to be our dinner tomorrow. So I have done, I've been kneading the bread. I am done. Um, I will show you as best I can what it looks like. It's dry. It's not sticking to my hand anymore. Um, no stickiness left, but you can tell it's still um, spongy. It doesn't look too, too dry. Um, and when I cook it, it rises back up. Um, that's just the gluten in the flour has been, um, the gluten is long strands um, that as you work them, they become more fibrous and that's what's going to keep the air bubbles in from the yeast. It's going to help your bread rise. And so this is just showing that the gluten has been worked up enough that it's got some bounce back. Um, so this is now going to sit on the counter for the next couple hours until it doubles in size. And we will be back to show you what it looks like when it's double and we put it in the bread. Okay, bread making part two. So we left you with the bread all mixed up. And then there's a time-lapse video that shows the bread rising. So now we're home. The bread is big. I told you it's four pans. You could take this and shape it into um, baguettes and cook them on a cookie sheet. But we choose to do them in these glass um, bread pans that I bought years ago at Walmart. Definitely worth the investment. Um, I find that the glass cooks more evenly and is easier to get the bread out of than metal pans that I've had in the past. I've always had cheap metal pans, so if you have expensive metal pans, they might work, but they work well in the glass. So I just took my fingers, clean fingers, and smeared butter around all the edges of the bread pans. My hands now have a little bit of butter on from that, so I can touch the dough without getting too sticky. And as you'll see, the dough is pretty dry. It's not sticking to my hands. Um, you know, there's that little tiny bit, but it's not gooey like it was earlier. And so I'm going to split it up into four. And then we kind of, you can knead it right in the bowl, the whole thing. I usually just shape the bread a little bit um, to make sure we get out air bubbles that might have accumulated from the yeast. Um, just kind of pat it down. It doesn't need another full kneading. And then just put it so it's smooth in the bread pans. And I do that with all four sections of the dough. Um, you can use this dough um, to make a variety of things. If you wanted to put it out on the counter um, and roll it out, you could put butter on top and put cinnamon and sugar inside, or raisins and cinnamon, or you could even use this um, like you would bread dough if you wanted to make like a um, filled bread where you put um, meat and cheese or something inside and then roll it up and put it in the bread. Um, this dough could be used for that. This dough is not sweet, it's um, normal French bread. So anything you would use French bread for. Again, just making sure there's no air bubbles that got stuck in there. And I'm just smoothing it out. So you just, you don't have to be exact with the measurements. It doesn't have to be, you know, eight ounces in each pan or whatever. I'm really bad with measurements. Um, just so they are somewhat even. And this dough has been rising for two and a half-ish hours, two hours, two and a half-ish hours. Um, we just wait till it's doubled or we're actually able to deal with it. So we got home from the store, we did a few things, and then I was able to grease the pans. So that's what the bread looks like. And the next step is to let it rise till it's doubled again. And we will show you when we're ready to the baking process. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so the bread and the oven rising. It's now up above. 
of the pans, about regular size for the loaf of bread. So we're going to turn this on to 375. And again, we don't really time things in the, this house. We just look at when it's done. So we're starting it at 120 um, for the oven to preheat. And we'll come back and hopefully see how long it's been cooking. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes since I turned the oven on, and that included the preheating time. So, this is what you want your bread to look like when it's done. It's um, golden brown color. And if you grease the pans well enough, they will slip right out. I find that it's easier, the bread comes out of the pans easier if you use butter. I tried olive oil in the past to grease it, and that takes a little more work. Um, to get the bread out, but it's not a lot of work to make this bread, and it's really cheap and yummy, and the entire family enjoys it. Um, this one got an arrow. So uh oh. <laughs> it's got a hematoma. A what? A hematoma. The bump. Yeah. That is four loaves of French muffin bread.